higher education is confronted with a pretty significant challenge. We're asking faculty and institutions to teach many, many, many more students. And we're giving them 50 minutes to try and address the needs of that much larger group with a much greater diversity. And then we wonder why pass rates, failure rates are so high. It's an undoable task without better tools and better support. The Open Learning Initiative is an open educational resources project that brings together the learning science researchers who are studying what do we know about how people learn, the software engineers who are looking at what are the affordances of the technology, the human-computer interaction experts who look at the interface between humans and computers, and the domain experts, the faculty who teach statistics, chemistry, philosophy. This is not just about online courseware. It's really revolutionizing how we think about learning and how we think about teaching. We make learning environments, and learning environments include what a student might do with a computer. Worrying is discouraging. Worrying is discouraging. But it also includes what a student does in the classroom with their peers. In summit. summit. Mm -hmm. Now, if you summit. said con summit, it would be a Northern English dialect. I definitely know that when they are studying using the tool, they know the sounds much better. Oh, you are providing an environment in which students can prepare for meetings by themselves in an intelligently tutored way. One of the most powerful features of web-based learning environments is we can collect this data about students and use that to drive very powerful feedback loops. Now the first feedback loop is to the student. So as they're working through the environment, they're getting immediate feedback just in time to refine their performance. The second feedback loop is to the instructor. We created the instructor learning dashboard. The idea behind the learning dashboard is to be able to give the instructors a really quick view of where's my class. So the instructor has a much better sense of where their class is getting it and where they're struggling it. So they can spend that very precious class time in a much more informed position. You can see where they have difficulties and you can focus on those particular areas instead of just giving a lecture. To look at one particular set theoretic problem. The third feedback loop is to the course design team. Long term, we really need these little introductory animated films. Every semester, we have hundreds of students using these environments. And while the instructor is going to get just that feedback on what's working and not working for just their class, the design team gets that feedback across all classes. So we can use that information to say, where do we need to focus our attention on improving the course? I'd like to hear your permission to record the session uh, with our camera. So that we the fourth feedback loop is to the science of learning. How did we figure out how to design effective learning environments to support students and give them feedback? That's based on a huge body of work that's been going on for years in the area of learning science research. As students are working through the course, the science of learning can introduce experimental conditions into the learning environment that will help them refine and develop new theories of human learning. I think for a lot of people it makes sense that you could teach math or science or even formal logic with a computer. So how do you teach something where there isn't an answer? For example, speech. The way that we use the computer may be very different from one course to the next, but it's the design process that's key. Actors picture. They could hear, they could be tested, they could give feedback, they were given feedback. Everything worked. Tumult and thunder. Right out.
we thought, let's try and take the same methodology and see if we can create learning environments that will support the community college faculty and students. Problem in such relatively formal classes is always that some students have an appropriate background, others don't. And in this way, students, depending on their background, can prepare themselves appropriately at their own pace. The course is being offered successfully, not only at research universities, but also at institutions that have a quite different student population. That is, students who are involved already in working, have families, and it works very successfully there too. What difference does it make? How is that really any better than what we're currently doing? We've done a number of evaluation studies to answer exactly that question. And the results showed that the students, even though they took the class for half the time with half the number of contact hours during that time, did as well or better than the students in the traditional instruction. We are teaching more and more rigorously than we used to. With students who have already some formal mathematical background, I go through this full-term course in one month. Without oil, I could not ever try to achieve this. For the last 100 to 200 years, we've been using the same methods to try and develop and disseminate knowledge. Now, both with the development of the learning sciences and the development of the affordances of the technology and the web, we are revolutionizing higher education.